Oh, hey, how we doing? I go by the name of Push Smoke. And I just jumped off the porch with Dirty Glove Bastards. Push. A dog say he got a half a ticket for me. You know I'm about whatever when it comes to money. All right, so we got Push Smoke off the porch with us today. What the business here? What the business here? Man, I'm feeling good. How you feeling today, Shit. man? Mm, mm, mm. I'm feeling real good, yeah. There we go, man. Yeah, you brought, you brought the whole team with you today, Shit, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What else you got shaking here in Atlanta during this trip? Uh, we got some recording we doing, and, you know, we moving around, shaking hands, kissing babies, rubbing elbows, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Just, you know, trying to get it, you know? Yeah. You come out here to Atlanta pretty often or not too uh, much? Oh, not too much. I come record a lot, but I record back home. But I move around, you know, I'm trying to get the feet wet. You know, we're on the little chilling. Trying to move in the chilling markets first, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely, man. Yeah. All right, so Lafayette, man. Talk to us about life out there, man. Lafayette? Shit, it's, it's hustle, you know? Your hustle got to stand out, you know? And, I'm, and when I say hustle, I'm not just talking about no street shit. I'm talking about period. Whatever you do, you sell pecan candies, whatever it is, your hustle got to stand out because you can get lost in the system, you know what I'm saying? For real, like, if you ain't got no hustle, especially during this COVID era, like it showed who who had hustle in them, you feel mm -hmm. me? So, you know, your hustle got to stand out. If it don't stand out, shit, feel bad for you. Yeah, yeah. I feel that, man. Yeah. So what was your childhood like? What were you into? Man, I was into everything, sports, really. Okay. I love sports. You know what I'm saying? My mama raised me, not saying my daddy, you know, my daddy was locked up, you know. But I mean, my mama raised me, my grandmothers too. I come from a good family, but you know how that go, you drift off, do other things. We're not going to be here to brag about it and say this and that, but, you know, we're going to keep it official, you know what I'm saying? But I ain't going to sit here and say I had a bad childhood. Nah, my people's taught me right from wrong. <laughs> my niggas was in the streets. Some niggas was out the streets. But I had a mind of my own. I know how to make it, make it balance, you feel me? Yeah. Real hustle. I feel yeah. that, man. So at what age would you say you jumped off the porch? About 14, 15. You know what I'm saying? And, and then again, yeah, yeah, about 14, 15, because when you when you in school playing sports and you seen how things going and you like, shit, man, man, little Jimmy over here, this nigga balling for real. This this ball, this balling for real. You start saying, man, like, shit just, man, I don't know about this college basketball dream, shit like that. You start getting into other things. But one thing, I always knew I was gonna be a motherfucking boss. Whatever whatever I did in life, I knew I was gonna be a boss. If I was fucking flipping burgers at Burger King, nigga, I'm a fucking boss. Give a fuck I'm work or not, I'm a fucking boss. And me and all my partners, we all, you don't know who's the boss in our clique, so we all feel like we the bosses, you know what I'm saying? Whether you the nigga that go get snacks, you the nigga that's cooking, whatever it is, nigga, you a boss, nigga, that's your position. We play our position well. I just knew my whole life I was gonna be a boss. I feel that, yeah. absolutely. So did you go to college after school or what'd you do? Hell no. <laughs> I ain't telling nobody else don't do it. I didn't do it. I was gonna waste my mama time. You feel me? I'm just keeping it real. But if you can't do it, man, go and do it. Don't listen, you know what I'm saying? But I'm just a realist. I couldn't do it. I was gonna go to that party, fuck hoes, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> do all kind of other shit, but yeah, I didn't do it. I ain't go. Okay. Yeah. So how did you beat, uh, you had lung disease, right? Yeah, I had a lung disease. So how did you get that and how did you beat it? And Honestly, I don't know how the fuck I caught it. Maybe a job I was working at, breeding that insulation, shit, whatever. Maybe that, I don't know how I caught it. I just knew I was coughing up blood and all kind of shit like that. And I was on my dying bed and, you know, two doctors came through for me, you know, helped me out. They took a piece of my lung. I did like... A, a bone marrow and two bronchs, some kind of stuff, and they ran the scope and all that, sent it off, and they find out what it was. And I stayed in the hospital for like two months. Oh, shit. I had the pneumonia like for a year, couldn't shake it off. Phew. Yeah, but I was in that hospital and I asked the good Lord, I said, man, if you get me out of here, man, I'm telling you, man, I'm coming out like it ain't nothing. When I came out of that hospital, that was it. You know what I'm saying? We took off, me and my niggas, hitting the boom, 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 posters all over, boom, 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 hitting our fly, dropping the mixtape, for running around the streets, you know what I'm saying? Creating a buzz, staying relevant, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and after that shit, shit ain't been the same. Real talk. The hustle just went, it went from here to here. Oh yeah. Yeah. Did it change your perspective on life? Hell yeah, hell fucking yeah. 
Hell yeah. It showed me them hoes is dirty too, man. That bitch left me on my dying bed, I tell you. But guess what? Like I said, that hustle, the energy. I start seeing some niggas wasn't good for me to be around. He was using the nigga. Some niggas I need, some niggas I wanted to, see, you know what I'm saying? I wanted to see. Some niggas I wanted to hear from on the phone and I wasn't getting none of it. You know, I came home. Yeah, you out, big dog? Yeah, I'm out. Whatever. It is what it is. Yeah. yeah. So how long have you been rapping? When did you first start? I started rapping probably at the age of maybe about 13. I used to always write rhymes, though, as, as a kid. I used to always write rhymes, and I love music. Like, I listen to music. I always did listen to music. My body moved to the rhythm, you know what I'm saying? But I started rapping. Yeah, about, about 13. Start taking it serious, like booking our own shows and shit like that. We was about 14, 15, booking our own shows. By the time we was 15, 16, we was doing shows in clubs. Me, excuse me, my partner, Baby J, we had our numbers on the uh, CD. Nigga, that was our house numbers. I swear to God, that was our house numbers. People be calling our houses, our parents, grandmother, they. Hey, who called and said, they, they told me how to show at this and that. Man, look, we the real talk, we was doing all kinds of shit. Like, we was going to clubs and we pull up to the clubs. They'd be asking for the managers, this and that. Man, we lying our ass off, making up a name. Man, that was us the whole time. We talking about our manager couldn't show up, but we here. <laughs> lying our ass off, but, you know what I'm saying, getting the job done. I'm talking about going everywhere, like, like it ain't nothing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Been dedicated to it. Oh, we dedicated not even the word, man. Shit, yes. music is our life. That's our hustle. Our plan A is music. Plan B is music. Plan C is music. So, whichever plan you got is that's what it all is. You feel me? Now we we all had jobs. You know what I'm saying? We all had jobs. Don't get it twisted. We all had jobs. But the music is everything. Yeah. Who were some of your favorite artists you were listening to? Coming up or coming up? Yeah. Shit, fuck on. From Louisiana, man. The Colonel, man, Master P. Okay. Uh, I mean, I like the Ghetto Boys too. My, my, I had the tape of the Ghetto Boys. My mama had. That's when it used to have like the single. Mm -hmm. Like it had a, the dirty version, clean version, and the instrumental. I used to rap on the instrumental, like da 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 na 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 na. I was robbing all that bitch, but you know, uh, cash, cash money. I fuck with cash money. Super tough. But Master P was really the first. Motherfucking ice cream, man. Oh, yeah. Ooh, when that bitch came out. Man. Hit the block dressed in white with some baggage of bows, a pocket full of... Man, come on, man. UGK, too. You know what I'm saying? But I remember I got in trouble rapping ice cream, man, at uh, school. <laughs> really? I got in trouble rapping that shit. Yeah. But that was a couple, you know. And then, you know, later on, you know, RIP to DMX. But, man, like in 98... I don't think people really understand that shit with DMX, how hard he was when he first came out. Those two albums, man. Man. He was it. He was the man. He couldn't fuck with it, but yeah. And then later on, you know, then you come with your boosters and your webbies and all that, you know. Yeah. But my favorite rapper of all time, though, the Carter. Wheezy F. Baby. Mm. Been so much talent coming out of Louisiana. Man. Fucking right. Got a lot of talent. Yeah. A lot of talent. I mean, who's your favorite? Wayne was one of my favorites, yeah. Fucking right. He's up there. Scarface, too. Yeah, Scarface on my side. I was a huge No Limit fan, too. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. No Limit was hard, man. Mm -hmm. P had a CD coming out. Every week. Remember looking in the back of the cover, yeah. you'd be like, who's Lil Italy? Who the fuck is this? But I'm still going to get that motherfucker. <laughs> I still got the case. What about this? Old girl, uh, Mercedes. Mercedes. Oh, my God. I used to look at that cover and just fantasize. I'd be like. <laughs> mm. Yeah. That man was a marketing genius. Genius. Man. This nigga had cell phones, man. You could have get a cell phone. A cell phone. I got the hookup, whatever. Back in the day, if you look in the back of that cover, this fool was selling cell phones. Mm -hmm. He was a hustler, man. Yep. And the way how he did it, man, you know, he killed the game. You know what I'm saying? Then he started coming with the uh, tapes. You could have get like the uh, and the body tape, the movie, The Last Dime. You know what I'm saying? Then he came with Hot Boys. Then when Snoop came along to the tank, the game was to be sold, not told. Man, mm -hmm. come on, man. Come, you heard what Snoop said on that interview? 
when Snoop said, when he talked about niggas getting money, he said, Master P was getting money. Boss said when they went to uh, Louisiana, I don't know, it was New Orleans and Baton Rouge, and P told him, pick a crib. Yeah, pick a house. <laughs> well, daddy got excited. Snoop said, tap it. Shut up, act like we've been here before. <laughs> <laughs> you know, nigga, I, the Shug, was a gift. Shug wasn't buying them no houses. Come on, man. man. But the Colonel, you know, I hear what a lot of people say about the Colonel. But we all going to say the bad stuff, but let's talk about the good stuff. Now he's in grocery stores. Man. I, <laughs> still hustling. Man, P selling rice, pancakes. <laughs> come on, man. Fuck. P, man, come on, man. Holler at me, man. I got some shit going on, too, man. We could, we could you know, we could partner on some shit. So if you, if Master P, if you listen to this shit, holler at me. We're going to partner on some shit, you know what I'm saying? We'll get some shit done, you feel me? Absolutely, man. So what's the meaning behind Push Smoke, the name? Well, the label called Push, Push and T. So Push and T stands for Powerful United Strong Hustlers. Okay. So my name always was Smoke. So what we did was we just took the hustle in it from push and we put it in the front of smoke and it's push smoke. And then everybody names around, we put push in the front of it. You feel me? But we we three we three labels that's that's joined. We push in T, Noontime, and Hood T. Yeah. So we all partners. Yeah. Bigger than music too. I got you. Bigger than music too. We got everything. We got, you know what I'm saying? We got we got producers, we got everything. Artwork and shit, we got it all. My little cuz tune, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? My little cuz tune, you know, he be doing the artwork and shit like that. Producers, we got a bunch of them. Too many names, you know what I'm saying? We got a bunch of them. Shout out to Twino and Sinister on the track, you know? Yeah. Yeah, talk to us about the grind that comes with being an independent artist, pushing yourself. Well, I mean, that come out your pocket. You got, <laughs> your bill, you got a bill at all, you know what I'm saying? Like. It come out your pocket and, you know, it ain't just me that's, you know, that's funding it. We're a family. It's a bunch of us, but we all know how to play our part. You know what I'm saying? So whatever it is, you know, from food to fuck, if you want to stick a gum, whatever it is, you know, we funding everything. You know what I'm saying? And we not tripping on it because we some hustlers because we throw our own parties to our own shows back home. You feel me? So we know how to make the money and not just put it in our pocket and be like, man, I'm going to buy some shoes. Some jewelry, nah, we'd be like, shit, they put this right here, this for that right here, you know what I'm saying? This for this, for this right here, you know what I'm saying? And we use that towards that, we just keep it moving, you know what I'm saying? We don't cry about, like, if somebody ain't got something right now, if we short of, we just, hey, I need, hey, look, I got it, big homie, don't even trip, we catch back up with that shit later, ooh, 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 and we go it on, you know what I'm saying? But it ain't, I just want people to know, it's never just me, even though I'm the face with the music, it's never just me, we a team. And you don't know who's the head of the table neither, you feel me? You might think he the head of the table. You might think he ain't the head of the table. You never know who's at the head of the table, you feel me? You never know. It might be this cup. This cup might be the this cup might be at the head of the table. You never know, you feel me? But guess what? If it's one cup, we're gonna pass that motherfucker down. Like if you in church and it with the bread and the pass the pass it, yeah, that's what it is. I feel that, man. Yeah. What's the music scene like back at home right now? Uh actually. A lot of artists is starting to grow on people. Because our city and the surrounding cities, like, you know, if you back home and if somebody know you, they'd be like, oh man, that's such and such. You know what I'm saying? But somebody they don't know come and they be, they'll fuck with it. Like, you know what I'm saying? But now it's starting to really grow. And I'm saying this, like, we not, I'm not saying we the ones that got it like that. It's a couple other people, but the game is changing. Like it's changing and the artists back home is starting to grow, grow, like getting their wings. But the problem we have is, you see how we in Atlanta right now doing this interview? Some of them won't take that risk. So they go back to blaming DJs. Oh man, a DJ don't want to do this, DJ don't want to do that, but how? You gonna take it to the next level, you feel me? You just gonna stay home? You just gonna, you just gonna sit on the porch? At home, you're just gonna stay on the, see when we get off this porch, we're gonna do something else. You gotta get off that motherfucker, you know what I'm saying? And I'm not talking about no 20 minutes, 30 minutes. You gotta go outside your area. You gotta go where nobody know you, you feel me? You gotta go and say, hey, how you doing? My name is Push Smoke, such and such. I don't wanna be your favorite rapper, just lend me your ears. And I might become your favorite rapper, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, you know, that's the problem. We, 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 we like to stay home a lot. But we, we growing on people, we growing on ourselves, And it's starting to stretch. Yeah. The social media shit, like some people complain about the shit, but I'm telling you, it's the e it's 
it's easy to reach out from a click of a button, but you still got to move. Remember back in the day, like without just like you had to do radio, all kind of stuff. You had to really, you had to really show your vision somewhere. You know, you see that that fire extinguisher sign? You had to show your poster somewhere. You could click of a button. You could do both. You feel me? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. That's real. That's a good game right there, yeah. man. Yeah. So, what do you think it's gonna take for you know people to recognize the talent there in Lafayette? Is it gonna just take one artist to keep, break down those doors, or? Nah, I think well, one artist can he can put a highlight on it, and maybe he can if he's if he's strong enough to hold his weight. You know what I'm saying? But I think when somebody opens the door, they don't need to close that motherfucker. They need to open it, but they need to go back and tell the motherfucker, "Hey, I got this door open right here." But look, hold on, you're moving fast. Don't don't just don't wait up, wait up. But we gotta draw some some heat on you. Like we gotta figure something out. Cause you can't just run through the door. We gotta create where the people that's before the door get to know who you is. Get to know who you is. Create some fans. Create some fans. Now nah, then you can run through the door. But hey, where you going? Psst, go tell him about that door. About this door. Same way how we did. Go let him know about the door. Hurry up. You feel me? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? And create a chain, you know what I'm saying? And shit like that. And then once that start opening up like that and start moving like that, you're going to start seeing things. You feel me? And stuff. But you can't just, you know, you just want to take somebody, come run through here. Man, and pass all this up. They don't know what the fuck going on, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, yeah. I feel that. Champion vibes, man. Yeah, that's the, this is the next project, right? Yeah, it's EP we dropping, you know what I'm saying? We got champion vibes. Got Trap America, you know what I'm saying? We got some shit coming. And it's all all the projects is done, but Champion Vibes is the next one we dropping. Okay. That we're going to put out in the streets, yeah. yeah. And Champion Vibes, you know, I'm a Laker, man. I Laker till I die, win, lose, draw, whatever. Kobe is my favorite player. Like, you can see Jordan, you can see LeBron, the best, this and that. In my eyes, Kobe is, you know what I'm saying, sort of cover. Took my man's body when he got that jacket on, when he in that locker room with the trophies. You know what I'm saying? R.P. Kobe Bryant. But look, your boy, I put my I put my body in there. Champion vibes. I'm a champion. Me and my niggas were champions. <sighs> yeah. Let, shoot the last shot with two seconds. Fuck a three. Shooting that bit from half court and we was only down by one. <laughs> I'm clutch like that, man. Real talk. What's the single you plan to push off this EP? It's really not a single. I'm just putting it out. It's just good music. Like a lot of times, I'm going to tell you, a lot of times in my projects, I don't have, like I might put out a single, but a single, it'd be by itself. And I'll just put out a project. Because I'm into dropping music, dropping music, dropping music, you know, so whatever catch it, just, you feel me? Whatever catch it, just catch. So I'm into just putting out projects. Just working, making things, you know, just working, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, I be having my singles, 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 and then I be having projects, and, you know, I just be putting them out, going with the flow, working, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Yeah. What can you tell us about this 3 a.m. flow uh, song that you just dropped? Yeah, something I just dropped. I actually was in the studio. I was in the studio about 1 o'clock, but I was bullshitting this and that. I just said, man, I'm gonna call that bitch 3 a.m. flow. Cause when we left the studio, it was after three something. Knocked it out, put it out. In about a week, we like at about 16K views. Okay. Some motherfuckers might be like, 16K views, man, that's this and that. But to motherfucker like us, where we come from, in a week, nigga, you 5K maybe, you know what I'm saying? So that's, you know. That's something our way, you feel me? Like, yeah, you know, but I'm seeing how the fans, how my stuff is growing. Every time when I drop new shit, like it's growing, it's growing, it's growing, it's growing, you know what I'm saying? It's growing. And the last time I came out here, I told Cuz, we was in the, I was in the mall in, uh, in, the, in the Linux. We far away from Louisiana, far away. And uh, a dude said, hey, your name Push Smoke? I said, huh? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. So he was like, you got a song, that's that break, talk. That's that. I said, yeah, you fucking with that? He said, yeah. I said, shit, I'm buying you food. I ain't know who the fuck it was. I gave him $20. He looked at me, he said, man, I like it. He said, man, I fuck with your shit. I said, I'm bro, yeah. That made me feel good. That made me feel like 
I'm doing something. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Yeah. So. Let's talk about Brick Talk then, man. Brick Talk. Uh, that's that Brick Talk. Uh, that's that Lick Talk. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I got a couple of radio. Like, it's on the radio on a bunch of stations, but some stations I'm having trouble because the name Brick Talk. But the funny part is if you listen to the song, I'm really talking about how clean a motherfucker is because a brick is what white, you know? So I'm really talking about how clean I am. That goes back to ice cream, man. You feel me? So I just took some stuff and played with it. My single before that was Call on Fire. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, it was Call on Fire. But Brick Talk is out now. It's on YouTube. You can check out my shit on YouTube. But Brick Talk, man, that's, the, that's one of the singles we rolling with right now and shit like that. Yeah. On Fire went crazy, man. Over 100K. Yeah, on Fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did and you? look, we went to Alabama. And like, no lie, I wasn't even thinking about On Fire or whatever this and that. I performed it. Uh, and my partners in them, they was like, man, you ain't see how we're on fire, how you? And I was like, yeah, yeah. And it was like, man, I'm telling you, man, that's the one. That, we need to go, we need to fuck with them with that. Cause I honestly never, I pushed on fire, but I never pushed it that way or nothing, you know? So they was like, man, I'm telling you, man, I get a phone call, they like, man, that on fire, you're hard like a motherfucker, this and that. They start, you know, yeah, we're on fire, yeah, that's that motherfucker. And there's a, a crazy incident behind that. There's a crazy incident behind that. Cause I been there, did the song, and then somebody took a nigga whip, set the shit on fire. Oh, really? So the people was trying all kind of bullshit, this and that, all kind of stuff. I said, you know what? I'm gonna fix y'all motherfuckers. Y'all just don't know. I'm 20 steps ahead of y'all motherfuckers. I'm gonna fix y'all. Man, I shot a video. Man, I went and get some billboards. Me and my niggas, we put the billboards on fire you with my all over in the city and drop the video man the people start talking about oh he taunting us he this and that man look at the date i recorded that shit months ago motherfuckers and you feel me they couldn't say nothing about it you know what i'm saying like i said I'm 20 steps ahead of y'all motherfuckers whatever kind of energy y'all give me i'm gonna give it back to y'all but the only difference is i'm gonna try to make dollars off this shit because why motherfucking hustler powerful united strong hustlers push preach <laughs> All right, so what's next for you, Smoke? Uh, we got something called Like Yeah, featuring Greg Street on it. A record, that's one we gonna put out there. Uh, you know, we got the EP that's out right now called Doughboy Vision. Yeah, that's in the streets right now. That's our latest EP that we put out, Doughboy Vision. But, you know, right now we just Brick Talk, On Fire, 3 a.m. Flow. Uh, you already know, you know what I'm saying? Bunch of visuals, just creating things, putting out the music, dropping real street shit, certified shit, you know what I'm saying? We got music for everybody, you know what I'm saying? West Coast shit, you know what I'm saying? That's something for everybody. And it's not just for the West Coast, I'm talking. The song called, the song called West Coast shit and stuff, but I'm talking about every, coast is from all over, the West Coast, East Coast, down South, you feel me? So yeah. Any last words, any shout outs before we wrap it up here today? Man, shout out to everybody that support us. That's who we shout out to. If you don't support us, fuck you. But shout out to everybody that support us from day one, to our new fans, to our family. Shout out to the, first of all, shout out to the men upstairs. But yeah, you know what it is. Let's push. Dog C, got a half a ticket for me. You know I'm about whatever when it comes